Hello everyone. So on this little episode of PowerShell Fun, we're going to be looking at how to do text to speech, as in how to make your computer talk. I said that's computer because, well, when we do make our computer talk, it'll be in an American accent. This is all revolving around something called system.speech.synthesis.speech.synthesizer. This is part, again, of that .NET framework. This is one of our little Lego bricks inside the .NET framework. So previously, we had a look at one of the Lego bricks, which was console, column, column, beep, to make our computer go beep. Now, that's cool. That's actually just a static object inside .NET framework. Point being is, we don't need to change anything with this. There's nothing we can do with it. Uh, what we're actually going to do with this, on the other hand, system speech synthesis, speech synthesizer, is we can actually make a few different changes to this uh, little Lego brick. So if I bring up paint, the general sort of idea with this is we have the .NET framework, the .NET framework, which is our big Lego box full of all sorts of different things inside there and in the .NET framework we've got various different boxes in here um, of various different things that we want so you know if you've got a, a, a box or various boxes of Lego we might have a box full of well um, let's go and draw something here a box full of bricks a box full of something like um, well, what's those like flat bits of Lego you call them um, floor bits maybe um, floor bits or panels, you might have um, a collection of things like um, little men in there, or men and women, in these various different um, boxes. This here is what this kind of stuff is up here. Quite simply, inside something like system.speech, we need to go into this box of Lego, and then we need to go and sub-select our individual bit of Lego that we actually really want to do, or it's really we actually really want to play with. So in here, what we've got to do in PowerShell is we've got to go and select one of these boxes and actually go off and load one of these boxes into our environment. And when we go and load one of these boxes, we can now go in and select our individual objects in there. Now, when this is a big box of Lego, one of our individual objects is going to be the different types of Lego men that we can actually access. In here, on the other hand, one of these is actually going to be something like synthesis.speech synthesizer or speech.synthesis.speech synthesizer. So if we go and grab this from my console here, and we go and load up Edge, because, well, obviously Edge is the greatest browser of all time, and we go and paste this into here, in the speech synthesis, speech synthesizer class on MSDN, we can go through and we can see how to actually use this. Now, there's a few different things we can do, but there's some very basic stuff. For example, one of the things we want to do inside the methods here is actually go through and do something like speak speaks the contents of a prompt object. Okay, that's great. That's something we might want to play with. We might want to set other things as well down here. There might be certain properties, like for example, rate that we can actually set. Gets or sets the speaking rate of the speech synthesizer object. So how fast something actually talks. We can also go and change voices around, depending on what voices we've actually got installed on our computer. So it's quite a bit to actually have a look at there. So we'll just take that docs.microsoft.com and we'll actually go and wallop that up there. And we'll just go and comment that out just so that, you know, we know where to get back to with our documentation later on. So, how do we load this in first? Well, one of the first commands we need to do is to actually make one of these boxes open or load one of these boxes into memory. So, if I just pop up here my little notepad, one of the things we need to do is this. We need to go and add type assembly name system.speech. So by doing add type assembly name system.speech, this is going to load that component of the .NET framework into memory so we can actually go and play with it. So let's go and get rid of that. So we're essentially opening up our box. So inside our box, what we're going to do inside system.speech is we're going to go and find uh, the bits and bobs that we actually need. But to go and find the bits and bobs we actually need, instead of inside this little box of Lego here, selecting our individual men, what we're essentially doing is we're going to make copies of those each individual men that are inside the .NET framework. And these individual objects we can then use and manipulate and we can change things with them. So we can give them, you know, funky looking hair or we could give them, you know, an evil mustache if we really wanted to. Um, various different bits and bobs that we won't want to do. So in here, in the add type assembly name system.speech, we're loading in system.speech into memory. We can now create an object from this. So again, I'm just going to come up here, I'm going to grab one of some of my code down here, just to save me actually typing it out. So in here, we've created a variable, $.speak, and we've 
popped in new dash object of system.speech.synthesis.speechsynthesizer. Great! So what that's actually done is it's gone into that box that we've actually loaded into memory and it's gone sub-selected synthesis.speechsynthesizer which is actually going to be our little man, our little Lego brick that we're going to play with. Now if we go and run that um, just to load it all up, there's nothing much we can actually do with it just yet because we haven't told it anything. But we can do something really simply. So we can take for example dollar speak now and put a nice little dot on the end. And if we put a dot on the end, what we will see here is we will see all of this stuff, all of the properties and all of the methods that we can actually go and play with with this little Lego brick. So just like if you've got a little Lego man that you're holding, you might want to set his arms to go up and set his legs to do the splits or something along those lines. In this case, what we want to do is we want to tell this object to do something. So this object to do something, we might want to tell this object to speak. In this case, what we're doing is we need to provide this some form of text. When we provide it some form of text, um, speech synthesis code inside there will take that text, absorb it, and spit it out for me as audio. Hello from PowerShell. And if we go and run that now, hello from PowerShell. You can hear my computer actually talk. Great. So we can do all sorts of different things in here. Once we've done that, we could create ourselves a new variable. So we could say, so for example, text is equal to hello from PowerShell um, Edge is the best whatever you actually want to load in there and we could change around this to be dollar text Hello from PowerShell Edge is the best Brilliant! So we can pass outputs to this and do anything we actually need to for dot speak, but there are other things that we can do with Synthesis Speech Synthesizer. More to the point, if you go back through that documentation, we can do things like, for example, select a different voice. Now, depending on what you've actually got installed on your computer, we need to find out specifically what voice we have. So if we go to speak.voice and just run that one line, notice this is Microsoft David Desktop wonderful so that's currently who's actually speaking so let's go and have a look at get installed voices get in I can't spell and if we go and run get installed voices on the other hand we actually can see we've got multiple different voices available here but we can't see what voices they actually are but if we type voice info on the end of that is it voice info voice info on the end of that what we can see is we've now actually got three different voices. These are the three voices that are actually installed on my computer. So I've got David Desktop, English United States. I've got Hazel Desktop, English Great Britain. And I've got Zero Desktop, English United States. So let's go and actually change the voice around here. So let's go and change one of these properties. So in this case, Speak is just using the defaults here. Speak is using the defaults by using David Desktop. So we don't particularly want that. We might want to change it. So if we go to speak.voice is equal to instead Microsoft Hazel Desktop let's go and grab her and grab that name copy that around paste that in here whack that up there and we'll just take off that get installed voices and we'll see what happens now hello from PowerShell Whoops. Edge is the best that's incorrect because I need to use hello from PowerShell Edge is the best not set voice select voice this is why we have notes here select voice I'll pop that all into the description of the YouTube video as well hello from PowerShell edge is the best hmm. exception for setting select voice cannot set the value property PS member object info how do we do this uh, it's a method it's not a property so select voice is a method and since something is a method it's doing something we have to use brackets on the other hand, you can also find some things that are actually properties, like for example, speak.rate. If we look back up here, speak.rate is a property. Speak.setVoice is a method, or select voice, there we go, is a method. So to set the rates, we might do, for example, rate of 1 and give that an equals. Depends if something's a property, we have to set it, or if something's a method, we have to select it. How do you know if something's a property or a method? Go read the documentation. 
So let's go play that again. Hello from PowerShell. It there is we, the best. There we go. We've now got Hazel talking to us. Let's change Hazel's rate to 3. Hello from PowerShell. It is the best. Let's change it to 8. Hello from PowerShell. It is the best. And let's go and change that to minus 5. Hello from PowerShell. It is the best. Brilliant. So what we can do here is we can take our text, our line of text, pass our line of text to system.speak. Um, uh, we select the voice, Hazel desktop. We've given a speak rate of 1. Let's make a sound normal in here. Now in a subsequent video I'm going to go talk up to you guys about um, how to do PowerShell remoting. But if you took something like this and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what do I actually want to do with this? Anything really. Um, it's changing text to speech. What, what do you want to do with it? Well, probably want to do something like this. If you use invoke-command, what invoke-command will do is it will send a block of code from your computer to somebody else's computer remotely and have it execute on something remotely. Other person's machine, whatever their machine name is, and whack that in a couple of curly brackets and then actually have this text speak on somebody else's computer. So you might want to change that to things like hello Dave or something just to really mess about with your colleagues. We know what you did last summer. That's quite an old reference now, isn't it? Um, and make that come out on your colleague's computer. So that's how to use system.speech and system.speech synthesis speech synthesizer. It's quite a nice little object to play with. Um, it's one that I use just to mess about with stuff. Um, and that concludes this episode of some PowerShell Fun Episode 2, uh, which is how to make your computer talk.